And during the few moments that we have left, we want to talk right down to earth in a language that everybody here can easily understand. Welcome to Search Talk Live with search engine optimization and marketing experts Robert O'Haver and Caleb McKelvin, powered by the Robert Palmer family of companies. Welcome to another episode of Search Talk Live. I'm Robert O'Haver. Today, we we well, actually every episode, we talk about everything digital to do with search engine marketing, search engine optimization, social media, uh, analytics, you name it, we cover it. Uh, and with me today, my co-host, Caleb McKelvin. How's it going, Caleb? What's going on, Rob? Doing Good. great today, man. I am extremely excited about the show that I am we too. have for today. It's going to be an awesome one. Uh, a lot of good stuff going on. Yeah. Now, one thing I do want to address, I get a lot of emails uh, in uh, in regards to me and Caleb doing uh, consulting for your company. Yeah. I do want to address this because I get a ton of emails on this and I do want to say, yes, we do. Um, but we are very selective in who we choose, uh, to do services for. But if you are interested in having us look at your site and do an estimate, uh, we can do that. You can email us at Robert at search talk live.com. Uh, we, and we'll be more than happy to at least address your questions if you have any. Yeah. Um, today on the show, guys, we have a wonderful guest. One of the tools that we've been using for quite some time, and it's, we found to be one of the probably premier platforms out there for analytics and reporting, uh, for SEO, uh, you name it, <laughs> social media, everything. I, I yep. find it. It's an all in one really. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's everything you need, everything, uh, that you want. Uh, it helps you, man. Digital yeah. marketing. It's got you. Now, with us on the show today, our special guest is John Henshaw, found co-founder and president of Raven Tools. He's been in the industry for since 95 uh, and has developed this wonderful platform for us to use. John, how's it going? Hey, it's going great. Uh, <laughs> wow, when you said 95, I actually just did the math. <laughs> I was like, Wait a second. Have I actually been doing that that long? Yeah. <laughs> Man, it puts everything into perspective, really. But you know yes. what? If you do what you have a passion for, you don't work a yes. day in your life. Yes. Absolutely. It's true. <laughs> so, oh, I mean, yeah. since 95, you've you've pretty much seen a lot of changes in the industry. Oh. I mean, you've kind of seen the, the, whole, the whole umbrella of what digital marketing and search engine engine optimization <laughs> excuse me no ingemination ingemination <laughs> we make up our own words here That's but uh you know kind of what it was until where it, in, it is today and so i think you have a really unique perspective on on the entire industry well you know when i started getting into it you know around 95 uh what i remember is all websites were ugly <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. man yeah. yeah and my my very first business was called jh web design you know uh in, Incredibly brilliant name after my name, <laughs> right? <laughs> John Henshaw Web Design, uh, and and I just remember making some of those hideous websites, and people pay me <laughs> a lot of money for them. But you know what? They didn't look any worse than anybody else's website out there. I mean, you know, CNN dot com looked like crap. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it all it, it it all looked bad. Right. Uh, and so yeah, and and I would say that the the uh, internet and websites and the search marketing industry have come an extremely long way. Yeah. Oh, night and day. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy how competitive it is. I mean, it is just, if you are not on top of your game, you can be left in the dust, it seems like. Yeah, well, and it's, it's just amazing because back in the day, the, you know, just the algorithm for search engines and uh, even sort of pre-Google were just so simple right. yeah. that, that there were whole you know, sort of industries going on, you know, before SEO was even, I think, you know, really coined or used yeah. where you could make a lot of money doing a lot of different things and, and all those methods or not all of them, but the majority of them are pretty much gone. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, it killed the affiliate industry and that type of thing too, you know? So on the plus side though, I, I will say that as a consumer, uh, it has made the internet better. Oh, <laughs> you know, yes. I mean, on the plus side, the things that, you know, Matt Cut and at all, you know, all those people did mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, as, as much as they have frustrated me and many colleagues in the industry over yeah. the years, uh, it's, it's uh, on the flip side, it's, it's, you know, it's made us as digital marketers better and yep. more professional. And, and if you're still in it, then, you know, you have adapted and you're doing things that are more closely aligned to a marketing, a true marketing agency, a traditional one yep. versus, versus how many links can I build from a different place? And then from a consumer perspective, uh, I, I think that the user experience and the type of content that you get, for the most part, uh, the the level of quality is is so much better. So you know, it's it's uh, it, what it really is is it's all the the easy ways of making money are. Uh, there aren't as many choices anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> right, absolutely you, not. Yeah, you know, though, it has really defined, you know, the art of SEO. Because before, you know, anybody could open shop and, and you know, call themselves an SEO. Yeah. But uh, now, I mean, with the, the automation for uh, Panda and Penguin and the Rank Mind. Is it Rank Mind? Rank Brain. Rank Brain. I always mess that up. Mm-hmm. Um, with that automation, I mean, you're not going to see those sites anymore that are doing that, that, you know, waiting for an update to get pounce back down i mean the, if you don't follow those those rules of of uh, best practices so to speak um you know you're no longer going to have that that rank for a couple months and then fall down so a lot of that that spammy stuff that was happening is is gone now with the automation yeah yeah it's, it's definitely i mean there's obviously there's still some stuff there and you know and then the only other thing i would throw out would be you know at the same time i think the search engines, Google in particular, still struggle with the false positives yeah, because yeah. there's still so many legitimate sites. And I was even talking to my business partner earlier uh, today because his girlfriend manages a major, major site, and they're pretty clean in how they do all the things. Yeah. And, and they they were recently hit and had their structured data results completely taken out. Wow, um, really? And that yeah, and from doing something that Google told them to do, oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and, and 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 so. I don't know. As much as things have changed, there's still a lot that's the same, it seems yeah. like. There's yeah. still the false positives, and there's still that spam that is able to kind of squeak through. You know, maybe that, maybe because yeah. Rank Brain's so new, it's like a five-year-old, and it, you know, as it ages, it learns and gets better. It's better as it goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, but anyway, know. let's get to it. Let's talk about Raven tools. Yeah, uh, and for those, what, what a great topic. Yeah, what, what an <laughs> awesome topic. I mean, just by happenstance, let's talk about Raven tools. So, no. John, tell me how you got started. You got, I mean, you've 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 done a lot in the industry. You were a programmer, programmer, and a developer, correct? Um, more on the on the lighter side. Okay, <laughs> I I um I I'm, can do a little bit of PHP, but I wouldn't consider myself a, a software engineer. Gotcha. I'm more of the web designer, webmaster side. Gotcha. So I, mean, I can, I can create a mean WordPress theme. Um, I, I, you know, I know HTML and CSS inside and out. I mean, yeah. I've been using it forever. Uh, and, and like I said, I can dabble with PHP and things like that, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not a, what I would call a software engineer. I, I would consider myself more like a, a webmaster or web designer. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah. you know, Raven tools for a lot of the, the individuals who have been in the industry for a little while, it's, very well known, but kind of just for those who aren't really familiar with what it is and what you guys provide, can you just provide kind of an overview, a summary of, of, of Raven tools and, and what it is and, and what it means for the industry? Yeah. Do you, do you want me to kind of start in the beginning? Like where did it come from? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, sure. that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So about 10 years ago, I moved to Nashville and I joined up with two software developers. And the reason why I did that was because I, I kind of wanted to take one more chance at that entrepreneur life um, to see if I could make a, my own company work. And I can do everything but do you know heavy coding. And these guys could. Right. So I could do sales. I could do SEO. I could do all the stuff. I could do design. And so one of the things um, that I did early on for basically Linkbait was we created an online tool called the SVU Analyzer. And we gave it away. And it ended up being something that became incredibly popular. And this tool... If, to give you an idea of how it worked and what it was like, it's very similar to what HubSpot eventually ended up making the mm-hmm. website grader, mm-hmm. and where it had a, uh, it would analyze your page, it would give you a score, uh, you could put that on your site if you wanted to, that type of thing, and so it was hugely popular. And it was back in the day, if if you've been around long enough, you know those listeners who have been around long enough, uh, when people would put badges on their footer, 
I don't know if you guys remember that, but, yeah. Yeah. but you know that you would see if you passed, if your code passed, or whatever it might be, and you and everybody had these little badges, these little uh, rectangle badges on their footer, and then they would link back to the score result or to that page, and right. so tens of thousands of people did this I mean, wow. with, with our tool, and it was all over the world, and and of course back then with a simpler algorithm, we were ranking really well for a lot of our key terms, and oh, so we sure. started getting a lot of business from that. But again, uh, more and more people started using it. We were also one of the first users on Amazon Web Services. We were in their private beta way wow. back in the day. Uh, and so what happened was is it became so popular, and we were just an agency, I mean, a really small agency, that we started getting our Amazon Web Services bills before they you know, greatly <laughs> discounted it over the past 10 years. Um, and we were like, we can't, you know, this is too much money. Like, we, right. this, this is way over our marketing budget. <laughs> and, and so it worked too well is basically what happened. And so we as an agency said, we, we feel like we're on to something here. And these people are using this. Yeah. But what would, what would an SEO, what would an agency actually pay for? Because back then, particularly in SEO, nobody paid for anything. Yeah. There were SEO chat tools. Uh, it was like you know the SEOchat.com or whatever, and, yeah. and a few other tools that were out there, and they were all free, and nobody wanted to pay for anything. That's why you are an SEO. Because yeah. like I don't like paying for ads. <laughs> I like <laughs> I like manipulating Google right. <laughs> and getting it free. Yeah. Uh, and and so that's where essentially Raven came from. We we looked at ourselves and we said, what are the inefficiencies that we have as an agency that are costing us money? Um, that are keeping us from maybe being able to handle more clients. Right. And, and what that came down to was reporting. Uh, we essentially were spending days, um, you know, the whole last week of a month trying to put together all this data from all these disparate sources into one cohesive report. And, uh, and so we were like, we would pay for that. And then on top of that, uh, me being an SEO and that being one of the main services we offered, like link building and stuff back then, right. we also were, were sort of like, man, it sure would be nice. I would pay to have a central place where everybody can have all their link records and, you know, for my link building team and then press a button and it also reports that. Yeah. And so, and so Raven was born. And, and, and it's funny because uh, we, we felt really good about what we were doing and, we launched it and it sucked. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the immediate response was, um, "No, thank you." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, but but fortunately, there were a handful of agencies in the U.S. and in the U.K. who uh, had caught notice of what we were doing, and and they saw our vision for what we were trying to do, and they said, "You know, we're not going to build this, but you're so close." Yeah. If you could just add, you know, multi-user feature and add these particular reports that you're missing, that type of thing, it would be exactly what we need even as a large agency is basically what they told us. And so what we did was we took it offline into sort of a private beta, meaning like nobody could really sign up for it unless they had a relationship with us. And we worked very closely with these agencies for about nine months. Right. And, and then we built the things that need to be built and we modified and changed the things that need to be changed. And that's when we started to get traction. So we re-released it uh, nine months later and, and people started to really like that. Now, that doesn't mean that we were overnight success. <laughs> right, but you had your kind of your focus group there to help you. We did. We had ourselves, you. but we also had, you know, but when it's just yourself, you, you, you know, you can't account for what everybody else is doing. Yeah. So, you yeah, need that we feedback. Had, exactly. Yeah. And so when we had those agencies working with us, that greatly helped the, the product. Um, so, so then it really came down to uh, three years, I would say, of just going to every conference and trying to speak and network and that type of thing. And that really helped it grow along with, of course, making the product better and better and, and listening to customer feedback and stuff. And that's, that's really kind of what put us on, on the map. And, and we experienced um, pretty good growth for several years. I mean, 10% month over month growth for many, many years. Wow. Um, you know, and then the market changed and all kinds of stuff happened to us, which yeah. we can get into maybe later. But sure. you know, to, to answer the, the original question of, so what does Raven do? Uh, you know, Raven today is still the reporting platform that we had originally built. It's all been rewritten and it's better and, it, and, and does more modern you know, type of things. But basically it, it allows agencies and in-house marketing departments to come in and with in a matter of minutes they can uh, build a report for their client or for their management. 
they can then schedule that report and it will automatically run every week or every month and, and send that to their client or to their boss. Um, and, and it's literally, it, it saves them a tremendous amount of time and money because it's, instead of spending days or the last week of a month trying to do all this stuff and put it together, they don't spend any time on it. John, it, it, you know that you, you know that that you know that is a huge pain point with SEOs is reporting. Absolutely. And, and one of the first things I saw when I when I joined uh, Raven Tools was the report. I mean, I my eyes got big. I was like, "Oh my <laughs> god! Thank goodness." <laughs> It, it's fantastic. I, I just wanted to throw that in there. Great, thank you. And you've been in, you've been a long time user, so that, yeah, yeah. that, that yeah. means a lot. I mean, uh, for you to say that. Yeah. Um, you know, I would say that. So there are other um, components to it. It's not just reporting. Uh, we've actually added a lot over the years. Uh, we have some social tools where you can uh, post to Facebook and, and Twitter and, and, and LinkedIn. You can schedule it. We support uh, native image uploading um, on those platforms. We're one of the first uh, companies to do that. Uh, but we also have the link management tools where we do and we do link monitoring. So we'll let you know if a link um, becomes active or goes inactive, which is really important to SEOs. Uh, we actually take a picture, a high res picture of the page and where the link is. Um, and those things are reportable too. So you can actually see where the link is. It will show you if they're using no follow. So there's some really neat things that we've added over the years. Uh, however, probably the the biggest thing that people use now, aside from the reporting, um, our most popular tool is our site auditor. Yep. And, and that was something that we, that's the most recently added tool. I think it's maybe only been around for a year and a half or two years. Yeah. And, and, uh, and people really love that. They use that for everything from pre-sales. They'll, they'll run an audit for a client that they're interested in uh, trying to get business from. Mm. And they also... Uh, run it monthly or even weekly to basically monitor their client sites and, and see if, it, and if anything changes that might be broken, then they'll go fix it. Yeah. Very cool. So uh, if you are just tuning in with us, you are uh, listening to Robert O'Haver and Kayla McKelvin. We have our special guest today, uh, Mr. John Henshaw from Raven Tools, uh, co-founder, CEO. Uh, so we're talking about Raven Tools today. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to call in at 855-722-0006. That is 855-722-0006, option one, and you will be directed to our main man, Dave, who is managing the phones uh, and the board today, as he does every week. Um, and we'd also like to give a shout out to Robert Palmer and the Robert Palmer family of companies for powering our show. Uh, you can go to robertpalmercompanies.com and you'll see uh, RP Funding, uh, security national title, saving thousands.com and, uh, and many more. So make sure you check that out. Uh, John, I really want to get into the, uh, I know reporting is huge with you guys and we can touch on that. Uh, I'd like to get back to that in a little bit, but as far as the site auditor goes, uh, this is a really awesome tool. And one of the main things that, that really I, uh, I love about it is the fact that you can pretty much crawl your site every day. Is that correct? Yeah, you could. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. And so you can kind of monitor that, which in most tools that, that, that are out there, you kind of have to wait a week or a month uh, to actually get that feedback from your website. Um, and, and I understand, I, bl I believe I read on y'all's blog recently that there are a lot more updates uh, and, and improvements with the site auditor. Uh, can you kind of expand on what those might be? Actually, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, oh, go ahead. You, what? No, sorry, I just wanted to say, can you explain what it is exactly? Yes. Yeah. Just for our listeners? Yeah, yeah what it does. Okay. So... If, if a lot of people out there are probably familiar with uh, something called Screaming Frog, which yes. is a really well-known, awesome app for crawling your site, and you know, and that also will find errors and that type of thing. Um, the the thing with Screaming Frog is it's usually used by more sort of advanced people or or has more of an advanced use to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and ours is a little different in that. You don't have to download it to your computer. You don't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be installed. It doesn't um, depend on your own internet connection. Uh, instead, this is more for people who want to be able to just come in, press a button, and then have somebody else do all the work. <laughs> and, and that's yeah. basically what we're doing. Yeah. Um, so, so essentially, you just come in and you say, "Hey, here's the URL. Please go crawl this site." And 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 basically, and essentially, when we crawl it, we look for. Everything we look at all the issues that would matter to a webmaster, and and that would be visibility problems. So if you have any sites that 
have uh, no index or no follow on them that aren't supposed to be that way. Uh, in fact, we actually had a recent customer, uh, they were a UK customer, and they found out that, that whoever had coded their site had put in the, even though the robots.txt was perfectly fine, they had, they had no index and no follow in every single oh, page, God. including their homepage, and they're like, why can't I get indexed? Right. <laughs> and, 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 our, and our tool was able to immediately you know, come back and say, you can't get indexed yeah. because, <laughs> because all your pages have this on there. And, and, the, and that, I mean, they were so thankful. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. They had but... that tool and it and it give them that error and they were able to see that, um, you know, oh, my goodness, like this is huge. Yeah, that, um, that just that's probably, uh, made the value go up in your, your tool <laughs> for life. Well, exactly. <laughs> well, and that's just the, the beginning part, you know. I mean, in other words, the most one of the, we check the most basic things like that, which are incredibly important, mm-hmm. um, but we also – check everything like uh, we, we have canonical checks so we're doing duplicate content checks. The way we're doing the duplicate content check is very similar to the original Google um, uh, patent or, or I, I know, it's like there's like a not a patent but an algorithm that right. they're using. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't be able to use their patent. <laughs> so right. it's like that's definitely wrong. <laughs> we're totally using their patent. <laughs> no, we're using the algorithm that they, that they use um, for checking duplicate content. So we try to make it as very similar to how we, we know at least publicly Google functions. How is and, it when it, how is it with the canonical tag as far as like, okay, you have two duplicate pages does in one canonical points to the, the main page. Does it pick that up and count yeah, it as so, duplicate? Or? So before we had that, so before we had the canonical support, uh, we, any content that, that looked duplicate to our, to our crawler, uh, we would just report as duplicate. But if we end up finding uh, two pages that look the same, right. but, but they both have canonical tags, or one has a canonical tag that points to the other one, right. then we say there's no, there isn't a duplicate content issue. Nice. So we don't report it as duplicate content. Nice. So Great. it's smart enough for that. Um, so And we look for everything from redirects and all kinds of things. Um, one of the nice things is that sometimes there are certain things we check for that people don't care about, or it's not an issue for their particular site. And so... Uh, what what our customers can do is they can go into settings and they can actually exclude anything that we check for. So, uh, for example, if if uh, title attributes on images is not important to you, mm-hmm. then you can completely exclude that and it won't be reported anymore. Oh, very nice. And it, it won't show any errors. And so, you know, a lot of people are like that. But we always start off with, we're going to check everything and then things that aren't important for you, you can just be like, ignore this right. from now on. Um, so those aren't actually the things that have changed recently. Um, the, the things that have changed recently or that I think Caleb, you had alluded to yeah. are much, are much bigger <laughs> than that. They're, they're overall sort of infrastructure changes. And that is, uh, when we built it, we, you know, we built a pretty good crawler, but, uh, we didn't build the most amazing crawler and we want to build the most amazing crawler. And, and so, so we've spent the last year completely rewriting it from scratch and and so we had been limited to uh, because we have to scale everything because the amount of customers we have we have to kind of you know we can only do so many things we can't let people come in and do a million dollar a million dollar a million page uh, site right and so we had it limited for a while to just a thousand page site so and, and that actually was good for most of our customers but not Everybody and we had a lot of people have five thousand page sites and you know all the way up to ten thousand on average and then once you go beyond that it's a very small percentage um, of people who who manage those type of enterprise level sites and we're not really an enterprise level software yeah um, and so uh, we just so we just rewrote the software and and then we just uh, upped the amount ten times so it was a thousand page limit and now you can do up to ten thousand pages and then we also had a daily limit of the amount you could crawl um, for all the sites you might be managing, and, and now that has been removed. And so, um, you know, it's, uh, the one thing we do, just out of fairness for all of our customers, is we we have you crawl one site at a time. But they the size limit, you know, if it's all the way up to ten thousand pages each, um, is all there is. So you can pretty much keep crawling and keep crawling and crawl as much as you want, um, and there's no more limits in place. And so that's kind of a big deal. Um, for, for us. And then there's, just, there's a bunch of other under the hood changes. Um, but with, with the rewrite, what's exciting is it's, it's, uh, we've, we essentially got rid of all the things that limited us before and right. what we could do. 
And so now it's opened it up to uh, we can, I can go to the team or our product team can go to our, our, our engineers and say, we want to do this now, we want to do that, we want to do this whole new feature over here. And they're like, okay. You know, it's, it's not, <laughs> it's no longer, a, oh my God. Right, right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think we can pull this off. Like now it's, it's, it's literally a, if this is a need that our customers or potential customers are, are needing, uh, we can now go and, and figure it out and work with our UX team and, and it's something that we can now technically do that we couldn't do before. So I'm, I'm pretty pumped about uh, where that's going. And, and so, uh, so that's, that is the site auditor. I guess that's the long-winded <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> of what it does. I mean, it, that certainly adds a lot of value to the service. Oh, absolutely. The, the one thing I, I like, too, is it's super, super simple to set yes. up your account. Like, yeah. I mean, you, you, you go through, you go, okay, I want to connect to Facebook. Like Facebook, <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah. it couldn't be any simpler. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, just, we, we try to make it that way. Yeah. Just, just the information that the site auditor provides and how uh, it explains everything. I think y'all did a very uh, a, an awesome job for even if you are advanced SEO or you know you're trying to handle your own your own website, your own SEO, just kind of getting into it. Uh, it's it's very it explains everything very well. So I think y'all did a did an awesome job with this tool and, and the updates with it. Thank you. You know, I'm glad you brought that up too because there was a very intentional design with that particular tool, which was we wanted to to meet the needs of more novice users, You're right? But all, but also provide hard details for yeah. for more advanced users, and and so you know we did our best to strike that balance. And so, kind of what you're describing when you actually use it you get sort of the basic summary presentation. You kind of have an idea kind of score wise and, and in regards to, is it my images that are really bad or, you know, you have an idea of what's wrong with your site, right? An overview, but it doesn't overwhelm you with, with details. Right. Um, however, you can click on any of those particular issues and then you can dig into it. Um, and, and then you can always export the data. So if there's a bunch of errors, you can export that as a CSV. You can hand that off to your webmaster and let them go fix it. Yeah. Very nice. Very awesome. So um, no, you, go ahead. No, go ahead. No. If you, uh, I just wanted to say, if you, if you want to call in with a question for yeah. John or one of us, you can call in at 855-722-0006. You're listening to Search Talk Live. We're in an interview with John of Raven Tools. And uh, we're talking... All the cool things. The yes, tools talking do. digital marketing. Yeah, if you got a question, call on in. Um, so is Dave is uh, Dave's on there, and he's screening people who want to do a political rant. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> for now he he's does an awesome sure. job at that. He doesn't let he doesn't let any of those folks get through. So we definitely want to throw a shout out to Dave for sure. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, well trained, highly <laughs> trained to to detect political ranters. Oh yes, very much so. <laughs> they try to use this as a platform all the time. I oh, don't right. know why. Um, yeah. No, go ahead. Oh, we keep cutting. <laughs> I was going to say the research center is really cool because it aggregates different data sort, uh, sources. Um, and, and yeah, we we actually combine we combine Moz and Majestic SEO data, uh, which is kind of nice because you can actually you know do uh, a site or keyword uh, search and and then combine that information, which is good because some people are going to be interested in say domain authority. Uh, other people are going to be interested in trust flow from yeah. Majestic, and, and it's nice to be able to have all that data in one table, and then be able to sort based on on you know the the different criteria, uh, because a lot of people will want to find uh, results that are you know have a high score from both both of those data platforms. Yeah, so that's really nice. One, the one thing I like too is the fact that you know I would I used to purchase several different tools. I used to use Moz. I mean, I still use Moz, but um, I used to go to different places to get the you know especially links. Uh, the different sources have different amounts of, you know, external no follow links, all that stuff. And you, you really have to kind of look at all of them to get the good picture, you know? It's true. Absolutely. Um, you know, there's one uh, part of the, of the research central tool that a lot of people actually aren't aware of. And, and that is uh, we still have uh, access to uh, most, first of all, most SEO tools don't have uh, fully legit AdWords access. Right. And 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 uh, and we still do. And one of the really cool tools that that is in there that I don't think you can get anywhere else is the old 
keyword research tool that AdWords used to provide where it would give you the search volume and all those different things like that, we yep. still have that tool. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and you can't get it anywhere else. And, and again, it's like one of those like, Raven's full of all these nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> right. they're, they're, and unfortunately, and it's our own fault. We've like hidden them inside the system. So you actually have to sort of, you know, browse around and try everything to find sort of these really golden nuggets. Um, you know, we obviously need to do a better job of, of letting people know about them. Yeah. Um, but this is one of them. And, and, and I love this tool. I think I've used this tool since AdWords ever, you know, provided that data. But right. anyways, AdWords, you know, they took away that particular tool out of their own software. Mm -hmm. um, mo most, if not all people, at least in the SEO and, and keyword research world, uh, don't have access to this at all, and we're and we're one of we're either the only or a very small handful of oh. companies that that has access to that data and and still provides that particular type of search, which I love. Yeah, don't say that too loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 and it's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? there it goes. <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> and then you also have the availability to link up your social media, so you can do Twitter and Facebook and all those things to YouTube, LinkedIn you know, to monitor that and, and yes. the engagement. That's, that's huge too. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, John, uh, I'm a link builder myself and I, I was just asking you a question. Uh, I know I get asked all the time and you, we see reports on it all the time and articles saying link building is dead. You know, don't do link building. You should be doing this and that. Uh, what is your, uh, what do you, what's your insight on the state of link building as it currently is and moving forward? Well, we all know uh, that links still hold value. Yes. And Thank you. I'm glad you said that. Well, yeah. I mean, they, they do. And, and that's something that even Google's public voices, you know, representatives have never said otherwise. Yeah. You know, they, dan they dance around it, but they've never come out and said that they don't have value or won't have value. Um, you know, they would love for them not to. Right. But the, all the tests they've done show that they do. And I, I think even Yandex... Um, or somebody, so some search engine tried to go linkless, <laughs> yeah. and they went back to it because you, there's just no way yeah. to fully be able to to find the the best resources and, and and evaluate that. So, so we know that links are still very important. And uh, actually, what was the question? <laughs> uh, well, you know, well, actually, what I was trying to is is the fact that as as far as link building, um, I think Raven Tools has some pretty awesome. Uh, ways to oh. find opportunities and also analyze your own backlink profile, uh, such as site finder and stuff like that. So if, if those who are, uh, you know, working on link building and stuff like that, uh, how can they use Raven tools to, to really enhance their efforts? Yeah. Well, and even aside from Raven tools, I mean, I think you now I remember your original question was about how has that changed? What does that look like? Yeah. You know, is it dead? And of course it's not dead. And yeah, I started with the definitely not dead. Right. Um, I think the way that it's changed is that it's just become more relationship oriented. Yeah. And so b before, back in the day, if, especially when the paid brokers were notorious and everywhere and it worked, um, you know, I remember paid link ads. That was huge for a really long time. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it worked. It worked back then. And, and so what's happened uh, over, over time with algorithm changes and, and Google in particular fighting that, has been that it's everything has become it's become more PR oriented, uh, pub, public relations oriented. Yeah, uh, it's it's no longer where you're just out there and just trying to buy a link and that type of thing. I mean, people still right. do it, but but good grief, I don't recommend it. No, absolutely. Um, not. Instead, it's it's more around. Uh, I, w I would say it's more around relationships. And partnerships yep. is, is where you see that happening because a lot of people say if you just do good content, that's all you need to do, that type of thing. Um, sure. I mean, like I'm to some extent, maybe, yeah. but I can almost guarantee you that even with most of the big, big sites and even the Huffington Post of the world and everything else like that, that there are, uh, in order to get mentioned, in order to get links and that type of thing, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that money is being exchanged, but favors are. Oh yeah, probably. and and or, or even just the fact that you're friends with somebody. Yeah, and 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 to me that strikes the most uh, 
sort of a, a tone of public relations. It's I, I, I really feel that link build modern link building today, and there is an exception. I mean, I know I know a company like um, I would say like Linkfish Media or whatever. Uh, they you know they kind of do more old school. I mean, not totally, but they do more old school. But for the yeah. most part, the the modern link building has more of a of a public relations kind of um, sure. with you know or smell to it. And and so the way that we've approached it. Uh, and our tool set has been, uh, we started going down the road of trying to create like a CRM system. Uh, we really felt like it had to do that modern link building was going towards communicating and, and networking and um, participating in certain conversations with people that you would really want to get to know who yep. might be able to uh, let you you know, whether it be guest blogging, which again is a whole other controversial topic too, but right. but in this case it would be become a regular contributor. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to, you know, the new the new term is contributor as opposed to guest blogger. Yep. Um and and be able to really just establish find first of all, it's find the sites that you want to have a relationship with and then being able to um find the people who you want to have a relationship with that's that are connected to those sites, yeah. and then and then trying to develop that the best you can. Um, we have, I would say that the that Raven is not where I would love for it to be in regards to all the things that I think you would need to do today. But it has some very powerful tools um, that go along with what you do need. And so I kind of mentioned some of that earlier with like the link monitor yeah. um, and the link manager and having to be able to have multiple people work on there. Um, and, uh, you know, but the, I think of like the CRM, that's something that, you know, there's still a lot we want to do there. There's a lot of things that we are still playing on improving and, and changing. Uh, it absolutely works. <laughs> it's, it, it does a lot of great things. Oh, yeah. Um, but that, if I were to, uh, pick something that, man, you know, I would like to improve such and such, it would probably be that CRM, CRM system. Yeah, Because gotcha. I think that's essential for link building today. You have yeah. to have a CRM. Yeah. yeah, because of time, I want to run through the rest of what you have real quick. Um, you have the content, uh, where you have the option of content manager, WordPress. Uh, can you explain what that is? Yeah, so in the, in the content section, we have the ability to uh, do a few things. Uh, one is we've we've had a relationship with TextBroker for many years, and we have a lot of agencies that c will uh, order their content uh, via Raven, and it will uh, through uh, TextBroker, and it will automatically push it right into Raven. And then, if you set up your WordPress sites, then you can actually push that content. You can actually edit it if you want to, and then you can push it to your WordPress sites for your client or for yourself. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So that's that's. The main gist of that, yeah. So we used to do that as an agency. When we did agency work, the reason we were still an agency. We aren't. We haven't been for many years now. But we were uh, several years ago when we first added TextBroker, and we kind of built it for ourselves. I mean, it was something that people wanted, but we also wanted it for ourselves. And what we would do is we would order a month's worth of of articles for our clients, and and then we get them all in, and we would. Um, accept you know all the good ones, and then we would edit them and, and optimize them, and, and, and then we'd schedule them out for the entire month. And similar to sort of how I've described the efficiencies of our reporting platform, mm -hmm. we, we would do the same thing with the content. We would just basically schedule them out, and we were done. Like that, our client's blog was set for the entire month because we just ordered it, optimized it, and then scheduled it, and, and forgot, you know, then we're able to forget about it other than, of course, promoting it. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Now, uh, if you're just listening to the Search Talk Live, we are with John Henshaw, uh, co-founder of Raven Tools, going over the the uh, all about the platform and and uh, talking search engine marketing and SEO. Yeah. If you got a, a question or comment, please feel free to uh, call on in at eight five five seven two two zero 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 six option one, and you'll be connected to our man Dave, or you can hit us up on uh, at Search Talk Live. On Twitter, if you got questions, we are, and, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> search, search, talk, chat. I believe hashtag search, yes. talk, chat. Yeah, yes. if you got that going on, so uh, you can hit us up. Hit us up on Twitter. We monitor that during the show. So if you got a question for John, uh, Robert, or myself, we can get that on air. Uh, and also shout out to Robert Palmer, 
Robert Palmer family of companies, uh, RP Fundings, um, Saving Thousands, Security National Title, uh, and everything that Robert Palmer Companies provides. You can check that out, robertpalmercompanies.com. Yes, and you can you can download the app. Uh, download the app. You can go on iTunes and download the show if you missed it, or yeah. you can listen to us on searchtalklive.com. Um, anyway, back to it, John. Sorry. <laughs> um, let's see. We got you can in, you can uh, pull down your data from your AdWords campaigns, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So we uh, that's kind of back to the reporting platform. But uh, sure. one of the things that one of the reasons why agencies really like using Raven is because they can report on everything they're doing social wise. They you know we pull in Google Analytics data. Uh, we can report on e-commerce and goals and all the good stuff, um, but we also connect with Google AdWords, and and so we have many many customers who use uh, Raven to include their their AdWords reports, and and for whatever reason, you know most most of the the paid advertising platforms out there are very expensive, and uh, and most of them want you to use their management. You know, be able to manage your campaigns and, and that type of stuff. And and what we find is, you know, most people just they're looking for an affordable and really good and professional looking report for their AdWords um, yeah. data. They don't they don't need the whole shebang. And so so that's a lot of our customers really like using the AdWords reporting. Yeah, no, I I, I fell over when I saw the reports for the first time. <laughs> I love them. Uh, oh, that's good. Thank you. Because, well, yeah, I was going to say one of the new things we added the past. I guess a year or two were the HTML reports, and and one of the things that was really special about that was uh, you can basically view it on a phone. It's all mobile friendly. It's completely responsive. Uh, where we always had PDF before, we wanted to kind of take it to sort of that next modern step, which is uh, more of an interactive report that I can. Uh, email to my client, and they click on the link, and bam, and they're just reading it, and and in Safari, on yeah. their phone or, or whatever. And so that was one of the big things that we added that a lot of a lot of people like because they can read the reports on the go. Very cool. Yeah. Now, if you haven't tried Raven Tools, you can try Raven Tools for thirty days uh, at no cost. You can play with it. Um, I guarantee you once you you'll stick with on, it yeah, after the thirty days for yeah. sure. It's Absolutely. like it's uh, no, I'm no analogies. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're ter- <laughs> terrible with analogies yeah, over here. I don't want to go there. But um, anyway, uh, I would recommend trying it out. Yep. Um, this is not he's John's not paying me to say this. No, but uh-huh. I use the tools. Uh, Caleb uses yes. the tools, and we don't have people on the show unless we believe in their product. Yeah, so, we would not endorse it unless we um, thought it was legitimate. Worst, so. worst case, go through it, set up your your. Uh, crawl for your site and all that stuff connect all your social media everything and then see what you get uh, yeah no I, I love this this is like the best <laughs> of endorsement is, is you inviting me and you using it and, and yeah. it's yeah. fantastic right Couldn't so get any better. I, I really appreciate it no yeah. problem so um now you were saying you have a big reveal for 2016 what do you guys uh, what's the, the big secret well it's it's really we're dramatically changing how we've done stuff in the past, mm-hmm. and and in the past, it, you know, it started off with we were an agency, we were kind of solving our own problems, and we were making what we wanted to make, and and even when we made it in a bubble, kind of like that story I gave in the beginning, uh, it didn't turn out right, and so we had to, you know, we had to work with other people to to make make it better, and and then I would say that we kind of got away from that about, you know, I don't know, sort of the latter part of, of its existence. And, and we ended up doing a lot of things, you know, we're an old, we're, our software has been around for a while. I mean, we, mm-hmm. we, it's nine years old, I guess you could say. And yeah. we've gone through a lot of different changes, uh, hopefully mostly good, but, but some not so great. And, uh, because that's typical of a product as you try to innovate, sometimes you innovate the wrong direction. Right. <laughs> and, and so, there are uh, one of the things that that we've run up against is uh, is we call it technical debt, and and it has to do with you know once you've had something you build on it you build on it, you build on it, you get to a point where there are certain things that either don't work as well as you think they should, um, and or 
uh, are difficult to update to be what's considered the most modern type of UX or interface or what people now expect. Um, you know, we even talked early on about the websites I made in 95 and how they, you know, they were all a certain way and, yeah. and now websites today are very, very different. And so uh, we have spent the last year, I mean, pretty much all of 2015, we've been pretty quiet and it's because we have been rebuilding the system and and we have been making it so that in 2016 we can do things that we've never been able to do before. Right. Uh, that That's one part. The the other part back to sort of like the UX and, and the front end and, and being modern is that we got to a point in our on our front end, our interface, our JavaScript, everything that uh, we we had done as many optimizations as we could to what we had built upon, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and we couldn't get it to where we wanted it to be. And so our back end is actually blazing fast, tons of data, fully scalable. It's, it's truly amazing. Um, however, our front end is not as fast as I want it to be. Uh, we mm -hmm. want our tool to work like a native desktop app, and it doesn't do that today. Right. And, and a modern tool does. And, and so, for example, when you go and you use Facebook, whether it's on your phone or you use it on a browser on your desktop, it's instant. It's fast. You right. do something, it's, you know, everything's in line. You, it, it gets saved. Uh, it happens right there. There's no page reloading. There's, it's modern. It's, it's what you expect. Yeah. Right. And, and so um, that's what we've been building is a completely new front end uh, to, uh, to basically be the replacement. But it goes a step further than that, which is um, in 2016, uh, we are going to be working on standalone apps. So what we've built is a suite of tools with an older interface that's kind of, um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Raven where it is now, we have lots of very happy customers, but we're not, we are not satisfied with where it is. We want it to be better. And so in 2016, we want to make something that will blow away the existing Raven. And, and so the reason why we're going to be making individual tools is because we've also identified based on the market that not everybody needs to use all the things we've just talked about. Yeah. <laughs> in other words, um, not, some people just want to use the site auditor. Yeah. Some people just want to use the reporting. Some people just want to do link building like Caleb might want to do, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. And, and so, uh, and we've looked at the, the space. We've, we kind of thought it would be sort of a, the suite would be the way to go. Well, it ends up that um, it's easier to tell your story and it's easier to market the individual um, tools and the, and the power of what they can do when you're just focused on that particular tool. Yeah. And we found out that most people are, are, would prefer to actually have that one tool that is better than any other tool that is sort of standalone and maybe pay a little less for it than have to buy into an entire suite and only use one or two tools, that yeah. type of thing. So it's kind of um, a la carte there, huh? It's kind of a la carte. And, and so... So the way what we're planning on doing in 2016 is uh, introducing a completely overhauled new uh, front end and design uh, that is modern. Um, our UX team is doing an amazing job so far putting all of that together. Very cool. Um, and 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 basically, our, the first place we're going to start is with the site auditor. Uh, we're going to come out of the gate with with a completely you know new site auditor runs off the same back end as as the site auditor inside of Raven, uh, but you'll interact with it slightly in a slightly different way, in a more modern way. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, in addition to that, we are also, uh, I'm not going to go into many details about it, but in addition to that, we're also working on a completely, completely new product um, that is different from Raven. Oh. Uh, and so that's that's something that nobody knows that we're up to. <laughs> oh, wow. wow, awesome. Yeah, I mean, well, nobody knows we're up to any of this stuff until now. That's You're right. Why I saved it for your show. Hey, thank you. Appreciate <laughs> so, it. Big announcements from Raven yeah, Tools. Right, we yeah. like it. So, so whole new, um, you know, call it Raven 2.0, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be coming in, in 2016. And then a completely new product from the company um, that is unrelated to Raven will be coming out too. Oh, very nice. Wow. Well, We've been impressed so far with it, so we know that uh, it's going to be moving in the right direction. And I uh, can't wait to see what you guys have going on in 2016 and yeah. uh, how we SEOs can benefit from it. Yeah. So, awesome. Will these tools, these tools will be mobile-friendly? 
Are they going to be apps? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So uh, I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, one of the limitations of, of the current app, which is very consistent with most of uh, the, the, our competitive space, is that it's not responsive and it's not, uh, you know, you can't easily manage it inside of, right. of a mobile device. Yeah. And, and so, um, yes, the whole front end, everything I just told you about, and yeah. the modern front end that we're building is all going to be mobile ready out the gate. Very cool. That yeah, is, I'm, I'm really excited. I mean, it's that's awesome. It's, it's one of those things where it's been a really hard year because yeah. you kind of watch everybody else releasing new things and people get exciting and you watch competitors be talked about. And, you know, for some of them, I know them and I'm happy for them. I yeah. mean, it's great. Yeah. But at the same time, you just kind of have to keep your head down because it's a long game and you believe in where you're going and where you're taking the company yeah. and, and where you're taking that product. And, and, you know, one of the things I wanted to also bring up was, the whole part about listening to our customers, everything we're doing now, whether it's what we do with the existing Raven or what we're building that's going to be new, is all based on customer feedback. I mean, nice. it's based on research, it's based on user testing, it's, uh, you know, so it's, we feel really good about um, uh, where, how successful we think this is going to be. Uh, and, and, we, and, and one other thing is that we are approaching us very much from a lean startup approach. I mean, we are we are treating ourselves like a startup company, and we are treating these new products like a startup company, which means that um, we will be intently measuring everything and listening and watching to everything that the users do and their quests and the problems they have, and mm -hmm. then fixing it as quickly as possible. And and before we didn't, because the technical debt and the way the platform was done, we didn't have that ability to be nimble. Yeah. And now we have the ability to be really nimble with this whole new front end framework and our redone back end. And so we're really pumped about it. Nice. Uh, that's, that, that's fantastic, man. <laughs> Very awesome news. Yeah. So um, I, I do have a question. Uh, this might be a stupid question for you, John, but you have raventools.com, but when you go to log in, you have raven dash seo dash tools is there a reason for that or yeah it's just laziness <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's, it's it, it was the original and, and okay. when you have a hundred things that you could be working on that just that guy just keeps dropping down the list you know we talk right. I, I, I go and i go well, can we change this yeah <laughs> we could change it but this is a little more important for us to go do or yeah. fix. I and, and so um, and I think also because of the plans I just told you about, yeah. we're kind of wait. In other words, that low priority. Yeah, I that's not going to be an issue when we kind of release the the new standalone products. Now, I will say this: we're not dropping the old product. In fact, we're we're kind of taking a thirty seven signals approach, right? Um, which is uh, thirty seven signals still has plenty of people using the original base camp. Mm -hmm. I um, mean, people feel very comfortable about that with that, and they still support it, and and so you know that's very much our plan. We have plenty of customers that we are very well aware of that really like the full suite, mm -hmm. and so and so we're not getting rid of any of that, and we're going to continue to try to make that software better. That's not something that we're giving up on, but at the same time, um, we we are ambitious and we want to innovate and, and make something that is very competitive and, and innovative in the market uh, and modern. And so we're not going to not do that either. And, and so that's, uh, I think there's a lot of similarities in sort of our ambitions and what we think people need and want right. um, with the same way that 37 Signals has, has gone about it. You know, right. even Basecamp 3 that came out. Now, that gets a little confusing when you have like three products and they're all numbered differently. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and we're, you know, we're not doing it that way. Um, uh, but even Basecamp three, you know, that I recently talked to, um, somebody from that company that at a conference in Dallas and, and, uh, he was telling me that that even came out of experiments they were doing internally. And they're like, this is so good. And we let our customers access this. And this is, they said, yeah, I'd love to use that. And so they went ahead and made it. And that's where Basecamp three came out. But, mm -hmm. Um, but to me, that comes from a desire to innovate mm -hmm. and a desire to always be better and sure. do better and, and then always listening to your customers. And so um, that's, that's the path we want to go down. Um, we want to, and we used to, you know, we used to be there in the, in the early days before we had a whole lot of features and things. I mean, we were, we were known for just 
building things, but man, that technical debt. And anybody who builds software or has any experience building software who just heard that, that term knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. And so luckily in 2015, there are ways to, um, to not have to suffer from technical debt. Um, and, but, it, but in order to do that, you have to rewrite everything. And that's what we did. Nice. Well, let me ask you something now. Does that change your subscriber base anyway? Uh, your, your subscriber, uh, format anyway? Like, I mean, like they're going to have the a la carte. Do they pay a certain amount for, you know, say maybe the social media monitoring tools? Or- right. So, so essentially what it should do is it should, it should actually give us more customers. And the reason why is because, um, you're going to have, um, like I said, the people who really want all the tools for right. for a particular price, and right. then you're gonna ha- you you have people who only want, say, the site auditor, mm-hmm. and the price for Raven is too much for them. Right. But if, but if the site auditor was priced lower than what Raven is, just for access to site auditor, yeah. they would be willing to pay that. And right. so that's something that we've recognized um, in our own customers, and even customers that have that have left us was sort of like you know I really only need this tool. And ninety nine dollars a month is too much for me to use this one tool. Right. So that's also part of what we're addressing is we're going to give them uh, more people, more options. Nice. All right. Well, we got about five minutes left in the show. If you want to call in real quick and ask John some questions, the number is eight five five seven two two zero 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 six. Option one. Um, <laughs> and uh, we have about four minutes. I take yeah. that back. So, do you have anything <laughs> coming up, John? Uh, I, I know you've. You know, might have spoken at some things and, and been at conferences. You got anything coming up in the near future? Oh, well, I, I don't think I have anything really planned. Um, I have been the kind of, like I said, kind of been heads down yeah. most of this year. And then I kind of became heads up <laughs> near the end of the year. Right. I, I spoke at Inbound Con in, in Toronto. Um, I, I spoke in Brighton, UK at Brighton SEO, which was an amazing conference. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually just got back from state of search in, in Dallas. Uh, but I haven't really thought about, it. I mean, beyond that, I haven't really thought about it. I know that I'm going to try to kind of start hitting PubCon again and, yeah. and, uh, and maybe some, you know, SMX and, and that type of thing. Cause I think you guys said earlier, you're going to SMX, um, advanced or something pretty soon. So, yeah. so I'm going to, I'm going to start attending, not even just speaking. I mean, I'm going to, I'll speak and, but I, I actually really enjoy hanging out. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, right. That's you know before I used to speak because that was a really good way to sort of you know let people know about you and that type of thing. Yeah. But you know, I really just I didn't speak at State of Search. I I just I just was sort of like you know I just want to go there. There's a lot of people I know and I want to hang out and I want to see them and right. and so I think that's probably what I'm going to be doing a lot this year. Is I'm just going to be looking at conferences that pop up and and obviously if I'm speaking there I'll be going to it. Um, yeah, but right. otherwise I'm going to be like you know what that's SMX is awesome. I'm going to go. I'm just going to get a go plane ticket, go in a couple weeks you know yeah. yeah that's that's kind of where i am right now very cool very yeah. cool well we definitely appreciate you coming on the show today john uh it has been an awesome hour uh we really appreciate all your uh insight and information that you uh you've given us and our listeners and uh we hope we can do it again sometime yeah, yeah hang- thanks for having me i had a great time it was yeah. fun yeah hang on the line for a minute let's uh let's finish closing out the show here but um i want to appreciate I appreciate everybody for listening, your support. Uh, we are on every Tuesday, 3.30. Eastern time. Eastern Standard Time to 4.30. Yeah. Um, our next show, we're going to have SEM Rush on. Oh, Bright uh, Local. Oh, Bright. Yes. Okay, Bright Local. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so, yeah, Bright Local is going to be on. Um, so, tune in next week, and you can call into the show answer your questions or ask your questions yeah, yeah and if you um, want to ask questions uh you can hit us up on twitter as well at search talk live or uh myself at cj underscore mce yep. and robert at uh at r-o-b-e-r-t-o-h-a-v-e-r um yes. thanks for your support tune in next week yes. and thanks for listening Search Talk Live is a presentation of the Robert Palmer family of companies.